Hello and welcome back to another full step-by-step -step PC build guide and today I'm going to be showing you how to build a PC in the Sopt Mesh MS V2. Now I didn't get the original version of this case but comparing the specs the main difference between the one I've got here the V2 and the V1 is improved GPU compatibility and we can now fit a GPU up to a maximum length of 353 millimeters which is absolutely massive for a case of less than 15 litres. As well as this, you can fit a full-sized ATX motherboard, and I'm going to be showing you this today. You can fit a 280mm I.O. and a full-sized ATX power supply, although not all at the same time. There's a variety of different configurations depending on the motherboard and the GPU that you go with, depending on where you can fit things and how much you can actually fit. So I'm going to be covering all this in the video today. I'm going to be showing you how to cram all this hardware into this tiny case. Um, I'm not going to go through the parts at the start like I normally do because I imagine as we go along something may fit well, it may not fit well and I may change a few of the parts out. But what I will do in the description of the video I'll put a link to all the final parts so you can pick up the build that I actually decide to go with in the end. Okay, let's dive in and take a closer look at the case. So you can see SUPT have really focused on airflow in this case. We've got mesh panels on the top, the front and both sides. Taking a look at our case's Tom I.O., we've got a single USB Type-C port and two Type-A ports. You might be wondering where the power button is, but it's actually here on the back of the case. So all four of our case's mesh panels can simply be pulled away. There's a little notch at the back here to get your finger into, and then you're able to pull the panel off. We've got two case accessory boxes, so this one contains most of our case accessories and in here we've got the feet for the case. So the first thing I want to do is give you a very quick orientation in the case. So our motherboard is going to go here and we can either have an ITX, micro ITX or full sized ITX motherboard. Power supply is going to sit in front of the motherboard. There's some mounting locations at the front of the case for fans and radiator, although whether you can use this depends on the type of motherboard and where you've mounted your GPU. More on that later on. While on the other side of the case, this is where you're going to mount your GPU. And you can mount your GPU in three different positions. You can have it horizontally at the top, you can have it vertically towards the rear of the case, and vertically at the front of the case. And again, all these different positions is going to affect what hardware you can actually put in the case, and I'll be covering this in this video. So the first thing I want to do is talk about the motherboard support. And you can see the case, we've got four standoffs in place, and this is for a mini ITX motherboard. So if I set a mini ITX motherboard into place, I'll give you a look at what that looks like in the case. So you can see with our mini ITX motherboard in place, we've got absolutely loads of room. And the big advantage of this is you're going to be able to fit a full-sized ATX power supply down below it. You've also got loads of room over to the front of the case, which means you're going to be able to fit up to a 280mm I.O. here. If you want to go with a micro ATX motherboard, we need to add an additional standoff into here. It is included in the case accessory box, as well as the tool for inserting it. So this is what it looks like with our micro ATX motherboard installed. Now you're not actually going to put screws through all the holes in the motherboard. It's just the four main holes that you would use for securing a mini ITX motherboard and the additional standoff that we've added in towards the bottom. Now while a micro ATX motherboard may offer some improved compatibility, extra M.2 slots compared to a mini ITX motherboard, installing it in this case does cause some compromises. The major thing you can see is the motherboard comes all the way to the front of the case. So this means that you're not able to mount radiators and fans at the front of the case. And you're going to have to move your radiator to the rear of the case, which is going to affect where you mount your GPU and also have some limitations on the GPU height. The other major issue is you're now going to have to use a NESFX power supply. If I try to fit a full-sized ATX power supply in here, it's not going to fit because the motherboard is getting in the way. Whereas you can see our mini ITX motherboard, it would have fitted in below it, allowing you to save some money on your power supply. The other important thing to factor in is that the riser cable that you use with a micro ITX motherboard is different to the one that you use with a mini ITX motherboard. Now this case comes both with and without a 140mm riser cable that is designed for a mini ITX motherboard. So if you're wanting to go with micro ATX or full-sized ATX motherboard, 
can get the version of the case that comes without the riser cable. This is the one that I've got because I'm planning on using a full-sized ATX motherboard. So with the micro ATX motherboard, it's either 175 or 270 millimeter riser cable that you want, and neither of these come with a case. You have to pick them up as an optional extra. Whereas if you go with a full-sized ATX motherboard, it's the 270 millimeter riser cable that you need. So if we're going to the full-sized ATX motherboard, rather than putting the stand off here, we need to put it into here. So I'll go ahead and move it. So this is what it looks like with a full-sized ATX motherboard in place. And again, well, this is going to bring some advantages. You're going to have the same compromises of the micro ATX motherboard. So we're going to have to go with an SFX power supply. So if I slot it into here, you see how that's going to work. It's going to sit in here in the front of the motherboard. You're obviously not going to be able to fit the full-sized ATX power supply. The other thing you've lost is you've lost the ability at the front to mount your fans and radiators. So another slight issue that you're going to have if you go with a full-sized ATX or micro ATX motherboard is the ports that come out the side of the motherboard you're not going to be able to use. For example, these SATA ports and some motherboards have right-angled USB 3.0 headers as well. You're not going to be able to use these. So if I take I even a SATA connector with a right-angle connector on it and we'll plug it into here. And then if I was to try and take our front panel to get it put back on, it's not going to go on with a SATA connector there. So importantly, side ports on your motherboard, you're not going to be able to use if you go with an ATX or micro ATX motherboard. So I've gone ahead and removed our motherboard to talk about the power supply options. So if you're going with an ATX or micro ATX motherboard, you're going to need to use an SFX power supply. If you're going with a mini ATX motherboard, you can either use an SFX or a full-sized ATX power supply. So by default, the case comes with an SFX bracket installed. So you can see here with our SFX power supply lined up with the SFX bracket, this is where it's going to go. So it is a little bit off the floor of the case. This bracket is rotatable. So we wanted to install the power supply slightly further up. We need to rotate this bracket round. So the bracket's held on with three screws. So what we can do is rotate the bracket round 180 degrees and line it up again. So we go ahead and set our SFX power supply into place. You can see now it's sitting much higher up in the case. And then that's what it looks like at the front. So you've got plenty of room beneath your power supply. If you want to go with an ATX power supply, you need to remove the SFX bracket. So this is what it looks like with a full-sized ATX power supply installed in the case. And you can fit full-size power supplies up to a maximum length of 200 millimeters. Although this is going to mean then you're not going to be able to mount fans or radiators at the front of the case. If you want to go just with standard fans at the front of the case, the maximum length of your power supply is going to be 170 millimeters. If you want to go with an AIO at the front, but have the tubes in a tubes up position, so the tubes coming from the top of the radiator to here, you're allowed your power supply up to 160 millimeters in length. But if you want to go with the tubes down position coming up to your CPU, the maximum length of your power supply is 150 millimeters in length. And remember, you are only going to be able to install a full-sized ATX power supply with a mini ATX motherboard. So moving up to the front of the case, at the front of the case, you're going to be able to mount up to two 120 or two 140 millimeter fans or a 240 millimeter or 280 millimeter radiator. Now remember, you can only use the front fan and radiator mounting slots if you've gone with a mini ATX motherboard, as I've shown with the micro ATX and the full-size ATX motherboard is going to be right up against the front of the case, meaning you're not going to be able to use this for fans or radiators. If you want to go with 120mm fans or a 240mm radiator, you're all sent out of the box. If you want to go with 140mm fans or a 280mm radiator, there's two brackets on each side that you need to remove. They're each held on with three screws. So there we go, with those two brackets removed, we're now set up for 140mm fans or a 280mm radiator at the front. So moving around to the other side of the case, if you are going with a micro ATX or ATX motherboard, you're not going to be able to mount an AIO at the front. So the only other place to mount an AIO is on this bracket at the side, and you can mount up to a 240mm AIO here, or alternately up to two 120mm or 240mm fans on this bracket. Each of these brackets is held on with two screws, so I'm going to remove them to give you a better look at where we're going to be mounting our GPU.
Okay, so there's three places in the case we can mount our GPU. The main place for mounting the GPU is just here, and you would simply set your GPU into place here and secure it into place with two screws here and a little thumb screw here. Now, this slot is going to give you the best compatibility in terms of your GPU length, and you can actually fit the biggest GPU in the case installing it here up to a maximum length of 353 millimeters. So to get that maximum 353 millimeter length, you're actually gonna to have to make a few adjustments to the case. The little supports here, we're gonna actually have to move down, and then we're gonna actually have to add longer feet onto the case. So the case is lifted up in the air. Without using those additional feet, the maximum length for your GPU is 332 millimeters. So I think for me, the main limitation of mounting your GPU here is really you're limited to a mini ITX motherboard if you want to go with an AIO. Because if you install an ATX or micro ATX motherboard, you can't install an AIO at the front, and this is the only slot you've got for an AIO. So if you want to go with a micro ATX motherboard or a full-sized ATX motherboard with your GPU here, you're going to have to go with a narrow cooler for your CPU. So if you are planning on going with a mini ITX motherboard, which is going to be up here, you're going to want to install a 140mm riser cable on these two standoffs or get the version of the case that comes with a 140mm riser cable pre-installed. It'll be mounted to these two standoffs, it'll then pass through this cutout here, and then you're going to be able to plug it into your mini ITX motherboard. So we take a look at where we're going to be mounting our GPU and our riser cable. There is options to both move this up or down. You can see we've got additional holes above and below the standoffs. And this little metal support, which you're going to be securing your GPU onto, there's also the option to move it up or to move it down. Or actually, if we're going to be mounting it right down at the bottom, we can remove this altogether. And you see there's additional holes down here to secure the GPU directly to the bottom of the case. So hopefully it makes sense as to why you might want to move the GPU down. This is a small card, but if you had a bigger card actually moving where it sat on the case further down would obviously allow a bigger card to fit. But you might not understand why you might want to move it up, but it actually does make quite a bit of sense. As you can see with the case with its current feet on, there's quite limited space between the bottom of the GPU and the table. So if I was to take a standard HDMI connector and plug it into the bottom of the GPU, so there we go, that's our GPU with a standard connector on it, and you can see there's absolutely no way that is going to reach its support brackets. Now the case does come with a right angled HDMI cable which I plugged into the bottom of our GPU and then if we set our GPU down into place with the brackets in their default position you can see this does fit without modifying the feet at the bottom of the case. So obviously if we were to move this up and we had a small GPU like we do here hopefully then you're going to be able to fit a standard connector in at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this up into its top position and we'll see whether we can plug a standard connector in at the bottom. Okay, so the first step for us to do is to move the two standoffs that would be holding our riser card in place up to the top slots. So we're also gonna to need to move this support up. It's held on with a screw at the back. So we can go ahead and loosen that. So it's this hole here that we're gonna to want to put it back into. So this other support we're going to have to raise up. It's held on with two screws at the bottom. And then what we're going to want to do is take two of these 10 millimeter standoffs from the box and join them together. And then we're going to take this bracket and then screw them in to the additional standoffs that are already there. And then we'll take another two standoffs joined together and screw them into here and then we can secure the bracket back into place at the bottom of the case. So you can see here this is going to lift our card up two centimeters in the case and I have been able to manage to plug in a standard HDMI cable into the bottom. It's going to vary but depend on the type of HDMI cable you have. I have a couple of different ones. This one fitted but another one didn't. Obviously the expense of this is going to be you're going to reduce the height for your graphics card. For this graphics card it doesn't really matter. We've got loads of room. So you're now going to come down to a maximum height in this top position of 312 millimeters for your GPU. So what if you actually have the opposite problem? You've got a massive graphics card and you need to lower it down to get it to fit in the case. 
So we're going to need to move our standoffs down and it's this hole that we're going to want to put the top one into. And again at the bottom it's two slots below the original bottom standoff. We are going to have to remove this support bracket though. And we're not actually going to need this. The GPU is going to rest on the bottom of the case. This other support bracket we're actually going to need to lower down beneath the case. But to do that we're going to have to install the case's feet. So to install the feet we need to remove these rubber pads on the bottom of the case. We've then got these 3cm feet that came with the case. This side's got a little rubber pad on it so it's going to go towards the bottom and we're just going to line it up with the holes that were underneath the rubber pads. The screws that we're going to use are labelled in the case accessory box. Okay, and then we need to remove the support bracket with the same two screws we removed earlier on. We're then going to want to remove the standoffs at the bottom of this support bracket. You may need to use the standoff insertion and removal tool to get these off. Now these are quite short standoffs, so they're not the ones we're going to want to use. It's actually the black 10mm standoffs from the case accessory box, and this time we're going to screw them in from the top. And then I'm just going to give that a wee tighten up with the standoff insertion and removal tool. And then we can line the bracket up with the underside of the case and secure it into place with the TM2 screws. So you can see here this lowers our graphics card all the way down, giving us the maximum length of 353 millimeters for your GPU. Um, I've gone ahead and plugged in the right angled HDMI cable. It's just going to plug directly in from the underside of the case now that we've got these three centimeter feet in place. Again, I tried the standard end and it doesn't fit. So with this position, the GPU all the way down, you are going to have to use the right angle connector that SUP provides with the case. So you can see completely unnecessary for this graphics card, but we now should be able to fit this absolute beast into the case. To do this, we are going to have to remove part of the top panel. So there's two screws on each side at the front. And two screws on each side at the top. So you can see now we definitely have enough length in the case for this graphics card. Our only issue is width and the graphics card is protruding out the side and we're not going to be able to get it fitted down into the slot and get our side panel back on again. And the reason for this is the case is currently set up for a three slot mode for a GPU and this is a really beefy graphics card. So we're going to need to adjust it for four slot mode. To do that basically all you're doing is moving this middle panel a slot forward which means that you're going to have less room on the motherboard side of the case, more room on the GPU side of the case. So first thing we can do is remove this screw here. We've got another screw at the front. So this is the rod that we have removed. In the case accessory box we've got this shorter one. So I'm going to go ahead and put the shorter one back into place. We've got a screw in the bottom of the case to remove. One on the top. And then we've got these two screws on the rear. So with all those screws removed, this middle panel is completely free. So we can slide it forward one slot and there's little notches on the side to push it into to get it to go into the right spot. So you can see here the middle panel is pushing through the slot here and that's holding it in place. I was planning on moving this panel afterwards. It needs to move from the front to the back, but actually the hole here needs to go through here. So I'm going to go ahead and move it now before securing this panel down. So we can then slide this panel into place. So now you can see when we line up this middle panel, it goes through the two slots here. So you see before we were screwed into here, we just need to go into here. And down at the bottom, it was in down here, and this time it's down here.
Now we take a look down the bottom of the case, this bracket is going to be in the wrong location because we've moved this backwards. We also need to move this bracket backwards. So you can see we've got two additional screw holes here we just need to move it to. Okay, so moment of truth, we can line our graphics card up and drop it into place. And you can see there, we're not going to have any problem. Our top panel is going to go on without any difficulty and our side panel is going to go on as well. So by switching this over to four slot mode, you can fit an absolute beast of a graphics card in this case. So there is a downside to doing that and that is on this side of the case, we now have less space. All we have done is move this middle bit that the motherboard mounts on to two centimeters further towards this way. So we've added two centimeters extra space for our graphics card, but we now have two centimeters left space on the motherboard side of the case. Really the only place this is gonna cause issues is with your CPU cooler, where the maximum height for your CPU cooler is now 53 millimeters, having been 73 millimeters in three slot mode. The other potential place you're gonna have issues is with your power supply. And now you're not able to fit a full-sized ATX power supply and even getting your SFX power supply in is a little bit tight, but it does fit without any difficulty. So you can see we've now got plenty of height for this particular graphics card. And in fact, we can actually have installed it one step up. And that's the important thing. I've just shown you the standard, the top position and the bottom position, but there is a range of steps in between, as you can see with the holes that we've got at the side and the manual directs you which holes to go into between each of the steps that I've shown you and gives you details of how much height that gives you on your graphics card for each of those steps. So the final thing I want to show you with the graphics card installed in this position is that it is actually possible to move your graphics card slightly further towards the side panel and away from where the motherboard and power supply is gonna be, giving it a little bit more airflow, provided you've got enough width on your graphics card to allow you to do it. Uh, Sub describe it as moving it half a slot forward. So it moves it one centimeter forward and to do this, all you need to do is add a one centimeter standoff into each of the two existing standoffs that are installed here before installing your riser cable to it. So we take two one centimeter standoffs and we'll add them into the existing standoffs that are in place. So then you're gonna secure your riser cable directly to the extended standoffs that we have screwed in. And that means that whenever we slide our graphics card into place, it's gonna to have to be sitting slightly further forward to line up with the slot. So rather than being right at the back, it's gonna be slightly further forward. And that's gonna mean there's gonna be a bit more airflow around the graphics card. So it really is just a matter of looking at your graphics card dimensions. You might be able to lift the graphics card up a little bit, meaning that you're gonna have more space at the bottom for plugging in a standard cable, rather than having to use a right angled one and actually being able to bring it a little bit closer towards the side panel might mean you're gonna have better airflow and potentially some space for cable management behind the graphics card. So I want to show you one more way to install your graphics card. This isn't the way I'm gonna be doing it in the build, which is why I'm showing you it now. And then we'll come on to the way that we're gonna be actually be installing it. But I want you to have all the options when you're deciding how you want to install your graphics card. And this way is installing the graphics card in the horizontal position with a small form factor GPU. So the first thing we're going to need to do is take these two standoffs that were installed by default here and move them up to the two holes at the top of the case. And then you're going to take your 20 centimeter riser cable. Again, it doesn't come with a case. It's going to be an optional extra that you're going to have to pick up and install it on these two standoffs at the top. We're then going to need to remove these slot covers at the side. There's three here. We should really need to remove two for the graphics card I'm going to be showing you. You're then gonna be able to slide your graphics card into the case, line it up with the riser card that you have installed and push it up into place. And then secure it back into place with the two screws are removed. So like everything, there's pros and cons to it. The biggest limitation here, I think, is the graphics card length and the maximum length supported is 211 millimeters. And obviously the bigger the graphics card gets, the more it's gonna infringe on what you can install at the front. And I think with this particular graphics card, you probably could just get a set of fans in front, but there's no way you're gonna be able to install an AIO at the front. And because this is blocking the other AIO slot at the back, the only option for cooling your CPU is gonna be an air cooler. And as we know, air cooler height in this case is limited to 73 millimeters in three slot mode and 53 millimeters in four slot mode. So it really is quite limited. And to get the best cooling, you're probably gonna to want to go with an AIO. 
The big advantage of having your graphics card like this is we can use the space down here for quite a bit of storage. And I'll show you this later on when we come on to the drive compatibility. So the first thing we need to do to install our GPU towards the front of the case is move this bracket. I've already removed the screws from the bottom, keeping the original standoffs in it and move it towards the front of the case. Next thing to do is make up your bracket like this. So this little bracket comes in the case accessory box and all I have done is screwed two 10 millimeter standoffs to join together into each end. Now importantly, on one end you've only got one hole, on the other end there's two holes and it's the one over to the side that you're gonna to want to go into. And if you look at the bracket here, you can see there is a little dip down on each end. So the standoffs go into the underside of this rather than in at the top. And in terms of which end goes towards the GPU side of the case, it's the end here with the two holes in it that's gonna to go towards the GPU side, whereas this end is gonna to go towards the motherboard side. So it's this hole here that we're gonna to want to secure it up to so we can set our bracket into place. Again, line it up with the end of the bracket that has the two holes in it up towards the top here. And then we'll screw it into place. Now the other end of this bracket, we're just gonna twist it into place. So it's the second slot here that we're gonna to want to secure it in. Then we're gonna take another one of these brackets that we used down at the bottom here. We're gonna slot it in here behind. And this is where we're actually gonna attach our riser cable to. So it's just two screws to secure it into place. Then we're gonna to want to add two of these silver standoffs to secure our riser card with. So one's gonna go into the top slot in the bracket, and the other one's gonna go into the top slot here on the case itself. Then we're gonna take our 27 centimeter riser cable and at a place eight centimeters down from the top, we're gonna to fold it across. The rest of the riser cable we're going to pass through the cutout in the motherboard and we'll slide that through to the front of the case and then we're going to be able to line the riser cable up with the standoffs we've put into place. So then when it comes to securing our GPU we just need to open the slot in the riser cable. We're going to be able to slot our GPU into place, line it up with the riser cable and then push it into place. We can close the slot on the riser cable and you can see here the thumb screw is going to go into here and then we're going to be able to put two screws in at the side. I'll show you this later on when we actually install our GPU um, and that's going to secure the GPU in place. So this is our GPU installed in the top position in this case. Um, it is possible to install a GPU at the front at up to 335 millimeters in length with the feet installed. But to do that, you're gonna to have to actually have to move the GPU further down, like what I've shown you with the GPU at the back. And again, it's a similar manner of just moving these standoffs to the other side and putting these brackets down beneath the case and then having the GPU sitting right down at the bottom. So it's something to point out with our GPU installed all the way towards the top position and the three centimeter feet installed, we wouldn't have any problem plugging in a standard display port without a right angle connector on it and using it in the GPU in this position. The only side issue we would have is filling a standard HDMI port. You can see we've got three display ports and our HDMI port is actually hidden and this bracket is in the way. So if I was to try and plug a standard one in, there's absolutely no way of being able to get it plugged in. Um, and what we're gonna have to do is plug in the right angle one before we install the GPU in the case. So this little panel here is actually in quite an annoying position and you've got much better compatibility with this larger cutout with the GPU installed towards the back. We do have a 120 millimeter fan mounting slot at the top of the case, but you are only gonna be able to fit a slim 15 millimeter thick fan. It simply slots into place here, and you can see here we've got two holes here to screw the fan into place using standard fan screws, and you're only gonna secure it on the one side. The other option at the top is to install two two and a half inch drives. So you can see here they're mounted to this bracket using SSD screws, and then all we're gonna to need to do is slot this into place at the top. There we go. And then if we line it up, you can see we're gonna screw it into here and here to hold this bracket at the top of the case. The other place we can install two and a half inch drives is at the bottom of the case. You can see we've got these rubber grommets here and here, and all you're simply gonna do is slot your drive in at the bottom, line it up with the rubber grommets, and then you're gonna use these long SSD screws to go through the rubber grommets and into the drive. Now, the only important thing I'm pointing out here is that actually with the front GPU bracket installed, 
The standos here are blocking this rear drive, and this other bracket here is going to get in the way of installing the drive here. So really the only way you're going to be able to use the two bottom slots is with your GPU and mounted in its default position at the back. In terms of installing three and a half inch drives, we are going to be able to mount two of these on the motherboard side of the case, but obviously that depends on what other hardware we have installed. So it's just a simple matter of lining. You can see we've got the two holes here, and we're going to line them up here and put two screws into here to hold the drive in place. And then if we flip this round up at the top, there we go. So you can see with this drive right at the top, we're going to be able to screw it in here and here. So remember I mentioned one of the reasons you might want to go for a small form factor GPU is that it really increases the storage in the case. So what you can do once you've installed your small form factor GPU, the PCIe expansion slots, you can fix one of them on either side of a three and a half inch drive. Or alternatively, you can actually put one on either side of two, two and a half inch drives. So that's two drives here joined together. Um, there's three in the case and one spare slot in the case accessory box. So that gives you a choice of either two three and a half inch drives or four two and a half inch drives. And then obviously you won't have this riser cable or this support bracket here because that's only because we're installing our GPU here. If your GPU is up at the top, this will all be free. And this little bracket here, you're going to want to have installed in its default position here. And then what you're going to do is just simply slot your drives into place. This is then going to slot over this bracket, which is here, and you're going to screw it into here. And then we can mount another one in front as well. And then it would just be a simple matter of popping a screw in through here and here to secure them into place. So for a case of a size, the storage options it offers is absolutely crazy. So it is up to eight two and a half inch drives. So you can mount four here, two at the top, two at the bottom, and as well as two three and a half inch drives on the front of the case. Or alternatively, you could go for four three and a half inch drives, two at the front and two here, and then four two and a half inch drives, two at the bottom and two at the top. Final thing to mention is there is an optional external 360 millimeter radiator bracket. It lets you install an AIO on the front of the case here, outside the main body of the case. Obviously, you are going to have to install the feet, but to allow the radiator to fit. I did ask SUPT for the bracket because I did want to show it to you. Unfortunately, they didn't send it, so I can't show it to you. But it is worth having a look on their website to see if this is an option that you may like. To install our CPU, we need to open the socket cover by pushing this lever out and bringing it all the way to the middle of the motherboard, and then we're going to be able to open the socket cover. We can then set our CPU down into the socket, making sure the text is the correct way up, and there's little notches at the top and the bottom, which are going to help line the CPU up with the socket. Once we're happy it's lined up, we can go ahead and close our socket cover, and then as we close the lever down, the black bit of plastic will pop off. And then we'll put this into the motherboard box for safekeeping. We need to remove the heatsink to install our M.2 SSD. It's held on with two screws. We can then insert our M.2 drive into the socket, wiggle it into place, and then flatten it down. And you'll notice that once it's flattened down, the same screw that holds our heatsink in place is going to hold our drive in place. Now, importantly, if you are using the motherboard from new, there'll be some plastic protection on the back of the heatsink you're going to need to remove. And then it's just a matter of reinserting the heatsink. We're now ready to install our RAM, so we're going to need to open the clips on the second and fourth slot along from the CPU. And then we can line the RAM up with the slot. Once we're happy everything's lined up, it's just some firm pressure, and the RAM is going to clip into place. And then same thing with our second stick, line it up with the slot, and push into place. And then we can secure the motherboard into place with five screws from the case accessory box. Next we need to install the riser cable in the motherboard so we can open the top slot cover. And then we can remove the plastic protection from the riser cable. Then it's just a matter of lining the riser cable up with the motherboard. And once we're happy everything's lined up, it's just some firm pressure to the riser cable. It's going to clip into place and the slot on the motherboard is going to close. And then all I'm going to do is try and flatten the riser cable back down so we have space for getting our power supply into place. Now importantly, if you were going to use any of the ports at the bottom of the motherboard, it would have been important to plug the cables into these before installing the riser cable. Next thing to do is get our power supply installed, and I already have sized things up in the case. And with this little bracket installed here, it is difficult to get the power supply fitted in. Although once the power supply is in place, it's okay to reinstall the bracket. So all I'm going to do is move the screw out of the way at the bottom, slide the bracket to the side, 
install our power supply and then put this back in place. We can then slide our power supply into place, making sure the fan is facing out the way. And then we can secure the power supply into place before the power supply screws that came with the case. So I've gone ahead and screwed this in again from the bottom. I wasn't able to get it all the way over to the second slot with the power supply installed, but it does fit okay in the first slot. We can then plug in our power supply cable. So I'm going to plug in a dual 8-pin EPS cable. We're going to need to plug in two PCIe cables and also our 24-pin cable. Now is a good time as any to get our cables plugged in. So I'm going to start off with our case cables and our power switch is going to go into this header here into pins 3 and 4 in the top row from the left-hand side. So we'll line it up and push into place. We've then got our USB 3.0 cable, which is going to go into this header here. So we'll line it up, give the back of the motherboard a little bit of support, because remember it's not secured in here, and push it into place. And then our Type-C cable is just into the header below. Again, support the back of the motherboard and push into place. Our EPS cables are going to go into these headers at the top left of the motherboard, so we can go ahead and get them plugged in. Then we've got our 24 pin cable, so we'll go ahead and line it up. And once we're happy everything's lined up, we'll apply some firm pressure to get it to clip into place. Next we're ready to start working our AIO. I'm going to set the fans onto the radiator and having them set to intake. And then we can use the screws that came with the AIO to secure the fans to the radiator. Then I'm just going to give each of the screws a quick turn with the screwdriver. I'm going to take the PWM cable coming from each of the fans and plug it into the double fan splitter cable. The RGB cables I'm just not going to plug in because we're not actually going to see the RGB effects on these fans. So just before we put the I.O. into the case I have sized it up and unfortunately the thumb screw at the bottom here is actually catching on our riser cable for our graphics card. And you can see these thumb screws do protrude quite a bit. So I do have a similar size screw that doesn't have a big end on it and I'm just going to replace it for the ones that come with the I.O. And again, I'll put a link to these screws in the description. The other thing you could do is just leave this screw out altogether and the fan will be absolutely fine on the radiator with three of these thumb screws. There we go. So hopefully that then should avoid any pressure on our riser cable. So before we put the radiator into the case, the first thing we need to do is pass the tubes over towards the front of the case. So this one does actually fit through here. If the block on your AI was a little bit bigger, you can remove the top of the case. And we're actually going to have to remove the top of the case at the front. So I'll show you how to do that later on. And then it's just a matter of getting the holes in the radiator lined up with the holes at the side here. It's just a matter of sliding it into the right place. And we can secure the radiator into place before the screws that came with the I.O. The cables I'm just going to bring up towards the top of the case. And then I'm just going to use a cable tie here at the top to keep the cables out of the way of our graphics card. Up at the top of the case we've got two fan headers. The one to the left is our CPU fan header and we're going to plug the cable coming from the fans in the radiator into here. So we'll bring the cable through, line it up with the header and push into place. So before we are able to install the water block onto the motherboard, we're going to need to get the tubes into the main body of the case. And to do that, we're going to have to remove this section off the top of the case. So there's two screws at the top on each side and two screws at the front we need to remove. And we've also got this little screw on here as well to remove. There we go. Next we can add some thermal paste to the centre of the CPU. And then we can bring our pump down and it's just a matter of getting these clips over the stock brackets on the motherboard. So let's see that's the top one on. And then we just need to lower the bottom one into place and try and get it over the brackets. So now we've got both brackets on I'm just going to tighten up both the thumb screws. If your logo isn't straight, it is rotatable, so it's just a matter of giving it a little rotation to get the Cooler Master logo nice and straight. And then the two cables coming from the pump, I'm going to root up towards the top right of the motherboard. And then here, just right next to our CPU fan header, we've got our pump header. So we'll line it up and push into place. And we've got two RGB headers just here at the top right of the motherboard. So the RGB cable coming from the pump, I'm going to line up and push into place. And then we can put our top bracket back into place. We're now ready to install our GPU. As I've got a small GPU, I should be able to slide it directly in from the front, hopefully through this gap. 
If you've got a much bigger GPU, you may actually need to remove the front panel. It's held on a similar way to this top panel here, and it's just screws and two different sides of it, and then you should be able to move the whole of the front panel off. So forgetting the GPU installed, mine does seem to fit in through here. And then it's just a matter of trying to get it lined up with our riser cable. There we go, and that's the GPU slotted into place. And then we can secure the GPU into place with two screws from the case accessory box. And then we can secure the GPU on the other side with a thumb screw. So I'm just noticing, unfortunately, with our I.O. already installed, there's no way to reach the clip on the riser cable. So if you were wanting to secure this, you would need to actually install the GPU first and then the I.O. afterwards, after securing the clip on the riser cable. I'm not really worried about this. The GPU is lovely and secure and it's not going anywhere. We can then return one half of the fan stroke radiator bracket and secure it into place with the two screws we removed earlier on. And we can then secure the I.O. to the bracket with the remaining four screws that came with the I.O. We can then plug in the 12 volt high power adapter that came with our GPU. Now I think this is where we're going to have a slight problem. If I route this back in to this side, there we go. I just want to test this and see can I get the panel back on again. So although I haven't been able to get the panel back on, our 12 volt high power cable is completely bent round trying to get it up towards the top of the case. So this would not be a solution that I would be happy with. So I have been able to pick up this 12 volt high power cable adapter with a right angle connector on it. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this into our graphics card. There we go. So that is going to sit nice and snug at the front and it's not going to be any pressure. So all I'm going to do is then route these cables up towards the top of the case. And then the top of the case I can plug our PCIe cables into the adapter cable. Okay, last thing to do is some cable management. So that's the build complete. If you don't know how to install Windows, install the drivers, install the RGB software, enter the BIOS, update the BIOS settings, I've made a previous video which covers all of that. So I'll put a link to that video in the description. And what I want to do now is take a look at the temperatures. So our CPU idled at 45 degrees and reached a maximum of 91 degrees during a 10 minute idle 64 stability test. Our GPU idled at 31 degrees and reached a maximum of 77 degrees during the stability test. In terms of noise levels, these were pretty good. We had an average noise level of 35 decibels at idle and 47 decibels under load. So with no fans in the system, really the only thing that I could change in terms of doing some additional thermal testing was to flip the fans around on the radiator, have the radiator set to exhaust and see what effect that made to the temperatures. So having our AIO set to exhaust, our CPU idled 7 degrees hotter and it was 4 degrees hotter during the stability test and the average clock speed was 100 megahertz slower with the AIO set to exhaust. In terms of our GPU temperatures, these were better with the AIO set to exhaust by 1 degree at idle and by six degrees under load. And there was absolutely no difference to the noise levels. So although I got better temperatures with my original configuration with the IO set to intake, as you would expect, one of the concerns you might have is all that hot air coming up against the back of the motherboard and heating the motherboard up and all the other components. So this was something I looked at. There was absolutely no difference between the motherboard temperatures between the two configurations. Although when we changed the IO around and had it set to exhaust, the RAM temperatures came down by 5 degrees. This motherboard doesn't have a whole lot of sensors in it to measure all the different components, but they were really the only two that I could measure. So I suppose 5 degrees in the RAM temperature is pretty significant. 
So I think when I factored all this in, if I was building again, I probably would have the fans and the radiator set to exhaust because that is going to give you better GPU temperatures and really in terms of the CPU running a bit hotter, you were really only losing 100 megahertz on the average CPU clock speeds during the stress test. So I think when it all up, I probably would prefer that configuration. So because this case has actually been out for quite a while, I'm not planning on doing a separate case review, but I thought I should share my thoughts on the case with you now. So in general, I think this is an absolutely brilliant case. The fact that you can fit an absolutely massive GPU, a 280 millimeter radiator, and an ATX power supply in it is absolutely brilliant. The fact that you can fit a full-size ATX motherboard, I'm not sure it is such a big advantage. I think if I was building in this case again, this would not be the configuration that I would go for. What I would do is build with a mini ITX motherboard, 280 millimeter AIO at the front, big GPU at the back where you're gonna have less limitations, and a full-sized ATX power supply. So while you are definitely getting some advantages with an ATX motherboard, I think they really are outweighed by the fact that you're having to go to an S of X power supply and the fact that you're having to move the position of your GPU, which limits its length. And as well, I think having the radiator in the back where it's up against the motherboard does not make as much sense as having it at the front. So I think any advantages you get with the ATX motherboard are really outweighed by the fact that you're going to have to change your other hardware. And again, when you factor in the price of an ATX motherboard compared to a mini ATX motherboard, again, that's going to be offset by the price of your power supply alone, going with an S of X power supply over a full-sized ATX power supply. There was also a few other issues with the case that I didn't like as well. One of them with the new GPUs that have the 12 volt type power connector, as you could see at the front, there was no way to fit it in without using a right angle connector. Otherwise, there would have been a significant pressure on that cable, and I would have been worried about the safety of the GPU and potentially it going on fire with that big bend in it. There was three other issues that I had with the full-sized ATX build that you wouldn't get if you were going with a mini ATX motherboard and installing your AIO at the front. And the first of these was there was a really sharp bend in the tubes when it came over the top of the case and you can see that they were actually getting indented. Another issue was that we weren't able to fit a fan in at the top of the case because the tubes are running up over the top in the place where your slim fan would go. And then the final issue that you would get with this particular build that you wouldn't get with the GPU mounted towards the back was that actually, even though I had used the extendable feet, lifting the case up and I had installed the GPU in the highest position possible, I still wasn't able to plug in a standard HDMI cable because actually the cutout in the bottom of the case blocked where the HDMI cable went into the graphics card. And again, there's a bigger cutout at the back and I wouldn't have had this issue. So summing all that up, I think this case is absolutely brilliant um, in the fact that you can fit so much in it. But if I was building again, I just wouldn't build with an ATX motherboard, um, a mini ATX motherboard, a full-sized ATX power supply, 280 on the front, and a big beefy GPU at the back, I think would be the way to go. So hopefully you have enjoyed this video. If you have, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching.